speaker. He's playing this back in December, so um, he was looking forward to hearing our speaker, Mr. Uh, Brian Boutwell, but uh, we do have an online feed, so hopefully he'll get to see it there. Um, I think our only announcements are the work day coming up on the 22nd, and then, of course, don't forget homecoming is on the 30th, um, and we, we want everybody to come out for homecoming. Um, Rick, how safe is your wisdom? He's actually going to be home by Friday. Amen. <laughs>
we'll do the best we can. And appreciate Brother Mickey, and we've known him a long time, and, and friends of some at the Lake Park Church, and, and what a blessing he has been to them. And, and it's just an honor to be here tonight, and I just want the Lord to do something to us, in us, for us, and through us. Amen. And as God said to Abraham, I'm going to bless you and make your name great and make you a blessing. Amen. Uh, I want the Lord to bless us and make us a blessing. Yes, Lord. And it's just good to be here and look forward to sharing with you in the goodness of the Lord. And I, I was sharing with your pastor. Matter of fact, I, I heard him minister over there in Homerville. And... Uh, at that, that revival there and you know he, he preached on set your affection on things above and on things of the earth and he he, he preached on set seek and slay and i was like boy that, that, that'll preach amen and uh, so i got some nuggets out of that <laughs> amen. and so i i was able to text him and and just introduce myself and he invited me to come tonight and it's just an honor to be with you, beautiful place to work and to worship. And you have a great facility. And I know that God has a purpose and a plan for this church. It, it's not built on a man, it's built on the man, Christ Jesus. And if it's built on him, the gates of hell will not prevail against him. It'll still be standing when the storm is past. And God will do his work. And it's just great to be with you tonight. Let's stand together for the reading of God's Word. Got something on my heart for 2022 and also regarding 2021. How, how many was ready to tell 2021? Amen. <laughs> Amen. <it's> stage left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and ready for 2022. Let's go to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, and I want to begin reading in verse 21. Yeah, thank the Lord for water. Went to preach revival at one place. Brother Nick asked the pastor for some water. He said, yeah, I'll get you some. I don't want to try a preacher. <laughs> I said, no, but you don't want me to water it down either, do you? <laughs> So he gave me about a half a cup the rest of the week. I don't know if he's giving me an animal. <laughs> but I believe God has some for us. How many just want to hear from the Lord for a few moments? Yes, Lord. Exodus chapter 14, beginning in verse 21. Let me set this up for you. It's the crossing of the Red Sea that we're all familiar with. But notice this. Something I never really thought about. The crossing of the Red Sea was the first obstacle for the children of Israel upon being set free from Egyptian bondage. Amen. 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 Uh, already feel something. How many knows, how many knows it's that first battle after you've been saved? Yes, Lord. Hello, somebody. Amen. That first challenge, that first temptation after you come to know Jesus Christ. That either makes or breaks you. Amen. And it sets the tone. Amen. It sets the tone for the rest of your life. The rest of your journey of faith. Yeah. And such was the case here. The crossing of the Red Sea. I mean, here they come to it. And Pharaoh doesn't like the fact that they have been set free. The devil doesn't like the fact that you and I have been set free. Yeah. And, 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 and just as Pharaoh did to the children of Israel, the enemy's doing to us. Yeah. Trying to get us to go back. Yeah. Coming after us. Try to get us back under his control and domain. And so now, here's the children of Israel. Egyptians behind them, Red Sea in front of them. And I want you to notice something that happened. Let's go. Verse 21. Here we go. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back.
by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And took off their chariot wheels, that they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And watch this, verse 26. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians yes, Lord. in the midst of the sea. Yes, Jesus. Watch this. I never saw it. Watch this. It's as if the Lord was telling Moses, Moses, close it up. Close it up. It wasn't enough that it just parted one time and they walked across some dry ground. He tells him then, close it up. And let's defeat this enemy once and for all. Yes, Lord. I don't know about you, but I just came to tell somebody, hey, it's time to close up 2021. It's time to close up that chapter. And let's move on to the next chapter. Amen. Father, touch us now in this place. Yes. Minister in a special way by simplicity as well as power. And yes. we'll praise and thank you for it for a basket in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. That's what I wanted to bring to you tonight. Simply this fact. That we as people of God need to close up the chapter of our lives. This crossing of the Red Sea was nothing more than a chapter in the life of Israel. Other chapters would follow in their story. But they had to close up this chapter. They had to close up this chapter to prepare them for the next chapter in their life. Because ahead of them was the wilderness. From there was the Jordan. And from there was the promised land. But they never would have gotten there. They never would have ended up there in the promised land if they hadn't closed up this chapter of their lives. Can I tell you, here, here's the problem with some people. Here's the problem with some of us. Some of us get victory over something, but we never close it up. We come through a situation seen the waters part. We have crossed on dry ground. We have saw the hand of God manifested. Mm -hmm. But yet we still leave it open. We still talk about it. And think about it. And I'm not saying I'm not saying rejoice about it and all that. No, no, no. I'm 
saying claim the victory over it and say, okay, God, you brought me through this first conflict and there's other conflicts ahead. You brought me through this battle. I'll fight other battles. I slayed this giant. There'll be other giants to slay. And now I'm claiming the victory over this Red Sea. I'm going to walk through the wilderness. I'm coming up to the Jordan and into the promised land where the blessing of God will be upon my life. Give God praise in this. So I just came to tell you, Enoch Church, close up the last chapter. Close it up. It's time for the next chapter of your life to be written because your story is not complete. Your book has not been finished. There is another chapter yet to be written. Oh, no wonder. No wonder I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. No wonder. No wonder, but me, David said it like this in Psalm 45, verse 1. He said, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Ooh, yes. ah, in other words, uh, yeah, I'll say it again. <laughs> yeah, he said, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. In other words, he said, it's as if he is saying, I'm ready to write another chapter. I'm ready for another chapter to be written in my life. I'm not going to close the book up just yet. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I still have a testimony yet to be shared. I still have a battle yet to be won. I still have a mountain yet to be climbed. And if God brought me through this, he can take me through that. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he will be what is started in me. So what could happen tonight for this church, for this body, mm -hmm. if you would just close up the last chapter. Yes, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Close up last year. Yeah. And the question is, what did God do for you last year? See, see there comes a time in our lives where where we have to get something out of our difficulties. Instead of getting out of the difficulties, we need to get something out of the difficulties. See, like when they came to the Jordan, what did Joshua tell them? He said, I want you to take a stone, every man a stone, so that when the next generation says, what meaneth these stones? What meaneth this shout? What meaneth this praise? What meaneth this hallelujah? What meaneth this thank you, Lord? Yes, Lord. What meaneth this joy? What meaneth this excitement? You can tell them it was God that brought me through. You see, sometimes we just got to get something out of our trial, something we learned from. And the question is, what did the children of Israel learn from the crossing of the Red Sea? Mm. What lessons did they learn? Oh, perhaps they learned that God is the same in every situation, even though the first situation may look impossible. Well, the first conflict may look difficult. It is from that first difficulty that we learn to trust in God because I get something out of that difficulty. And that difficulty lets me know that I'm a child of God. The Amen. fact that the enemy is after me yes, tells Lord. me he doesn't have me. Amen. The, the fact that I'm being tried yes. mm -hmm. tells me there's something in me. Amen. The fact that I'm being tested. The fact, yeah, here we go. The fact that you're in a battle tells you you haven't been conquered. Amen. It tells you you're still a threat to the adversary. Amen. Because something interesting happened. When they came through this Red Sea, I like what happened. It was 
so amazing. The Bible said it was like a cloud by day and a fire by night. And it was a wall between them and the adversary. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to the Israelites, it was light and darkness to the Egyptians. Yeah, you ever wonder why some people just don't understand that? <laughs> I mean, they, they just wonder, you know, how, how do we keep our mind when they are losing theirs? Yeah. When, when trouble comes to us, they hit the bottle and we hit the Bible. but we run to the church. <laughs> I mean, they don't understand us. Going to church during a pandemic? Why? <laughs> and some people are afraid to go to church. Oh. Oh, aren't you afraid you might get it? Oh, you might get the COVID. Yeah, you might get the cure. <laughs> of Christ is greater than the virus of Corona. Amen. I wish somebody would give him a praise right there. The virtue of Christ is greater than the virus of Corona. If we can just touch the hem of his heart. Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. We will be whole. But you see, it's the enemy that, that has put that fear in us. In the church now, yeah, what a better place to be. Amen. In a time of crisis. Yeah. In a time of difficulty. And those outside of the faith, they can't understand us. But look what happened. Here comes the Egyptians just trying to get Israel to go back with their chariots and horses. God sends a takes all the chariots. Hey, if it seems like the enemy's been after you, just remember, he ain't got no wheels. <laughs> <laughs> he was stripped of his power at Calvary. <laughs> and when Jesus was on the cross, he didn't say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. <laughs> So it's amazing to me, this first conflict, this first difficulty would make the difference for the children of Israel. And there's three things I want to give you quickly and then we'll pray. I don't, I don't want to hold you long. I, I don't preach Pharaoh sermons. Pharaoh wouldn't let God's people go. <laughs> <laughs>
you see me. That's you will never know. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I believe in 2022, God's going to bring somebody in this church to a place in Him.
ground. See, the amazing thing was, he stretched his hand over the Red Sea. But then when they walked across on dry ground, God could have caused the waters to come back. In himself. Mm. But he tells Moses, he tells Moses to finish it. He says, you started it, Moses, man, you finished it. You stretched your hand out.